Aloha kako. I am so pleased to share today with you Dr. Clifton Otto from Cannabis Healthcare Hawaii. Clifton is a patient advocate. Uh, he's a doctor uh, serving cannabis patients. And he's been a longtime supporter of patients in Hawaii and, and their specific needs. Uh, he's had a lot of great results and has created impacts in our community um, that will last for years to come. Um, and was involved this morning in providing testimony to the Department of Health for additional conditions for which patients could be approved um, for a 329 license. Thank you so much, Dr. Otto, for, for being with us this morning um, and uh, participating in this quick teaser video for our Hawaii Cannabis Can Shift event on November 7th. Um, what is the topic um, or the title of your presentation? Aloha, Brent, and uh, thanks for uh, this little uh, teaser. Looking forward to the event very much. Um, so what I'm thinking of, of talking about is uh, an update on the situation in Hawaii regarding this ongoing conflict between the federal regulation of the non-medical use of marijuana and the state authorized medical use of cannabis in Hawaii. <clears throat> and it was, it's interesting coming off of the virtual uh, public hearing this morning uh, with Department of Health. Uh, of course, they're considering petitions to add anxiety, depression, and insomnia to Hawaii's program. And by the way, thanks very much for your testimony as well. It's so important that, that we be able to provide this, uh, this input to the Department of Health. But, but it was interesting because this hearing today really highlighted this issue of, of the conflict that I mentioned because they're thinking of adding anxiety, depression, and insomnia to the list of qualifying debilitating conditions. And those are all very large patient populations. So if they do indeed decide to add these uh, conditions, we're gonna see a significant, potentially a significant increase in the number of registered medical cannabis patients. And that could certainly be a great thing for our patients, but at the same time, it's going to increase the number of patients who are gonna be considered federal criminals under the, the current conflict that we're experiencing. So this is really an opportunity as well for the Department of Health to look at ways to eliminate this conflict. And this issue is far from settled, despite what everybody seems to think. And, and I believe one of your other speakers is going to be addressing this as well, because there are actions that the state can take under its authority to decide how controlled substances are used within the state. Um, and there are options such as a federal exemption notification to the DEA that, that some states are getting very close to submitting. So this is a great time for the Department of Health to look at this option. Uh, I really don't want other states to start uh, acting on this and then all of a sudden people are coming back and saying, you know, how come our Department of Health isn't doing anything about this? And if it means pushing the Office of the Attorney General a little bit, to take more of a uh, supportive role in uh, protecting state law and its authority to decide on the medical use of controlled substances, uh, that would be great. Maybe that's what we really need. So anyway, I'm going to be providing an update uh, on the situation of, uh, in Hawaii. I have been uh, sending communications on almost a weekly basis to the Office of Medical Control and Cannabis Regulation to try and get them to move on this issue and, and try and uh, take on a broader perspective on the role that they could play in actually resolving this conflict. That's super helpful. And it, it makes me uh, really think back to when I first moved to Hawaii and, and the stigma in, in our patient populations at that time where uh, we had a medical program, but what I heard constantly from key decision makers, lawmakers, was that, well, it's still federally illegal. And I'm not sure that that was true. And certainly it sounds like your uh, efforts with the federal exemption in Hawaii are going to clarify that. Um, is that, is that sound fair? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of uh, education that needs to be done, a lot of misinformation. Uh, that is circulating. And unfortunately, 
uh, a lot of our policymakers and state lawmakers and elected officials have just kind of taken this position that this has been settled, there's nothing they can do about it, and, and that's not true, and that's what I'm trying to raise awareness about. So I, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, continue to do that. Well, thank you so much. I, everyone on our island really appreciates you. So thank you every time you're able to come over and, and help patients. And thank you for your efforts at the state level. Um, really looking forward to your presentation on November 7th. And I uh, just want to mention that uh, if folks want to look at the uh, times and lists of presentations, uh, they can do so at hawaiicannabis.org slash can shift. That's C-A-N-N-S-H-I-F-T. Thank you so much, Dr. Otto, for all of your time, for all of your efforts, for especially your help with Medical Cannabis Day and uh, working on this uh, federal exemption for patients in Hawaii. Thanks, Brent. Appreciate all your help as well. Aloha. Aloha.